In today's shoot, inspired by Paolo Roversi, we are going to do some light painting followed by creating a faded and a blurred Polaroid effect in Photoshop. When it comes to creative unorthodox lighting, Paolo Roversi is the king. Mirrors and reflection is one thing he plays a lot with, so we use a mirror in our shoot. We put a blue gel on our video light and used it along with a speed light in a gridded beauty dish. The beauty dish just lit the model's face. The Yongnuo trigger that we used had an infrared focus assist which helped a lot to shoot in the dark. During the 1 second exposure, the flash would freeze the model's face and we would paint blue light over the rest of her body. Now let's take a look at the final image and create the Polaroid effect in Photoshop. So this is the image I'm going to work on. The blue video light didn't quite register well here as the shutter speed was one tenth of a second instead of one second. Still, I think it's a very good base to create the Polaroid effect. So to start with, I'm going to add a little bit of volume to her hair using the rectangular marquee tool to make a selection, copy it to a new layer and warp. With Merge New, I'm going to merge it to a new layer. Next, I'm going to use the Liquify tool to just slightly tuck her chin. I'm not going to retouch her skin at all. I'm going to soften it with some diffusion just like they did in the old days but digitally. Make sure your background color is white and then go to the filter gallery and distort and then diffuse glow. Choose a setting that looks natural to your image. I'm going to reduce the opacity a bit to 65 and name this layer as Diffuse Glow. Next, I'm going to merge it all to a new layer with Merge New and create another copy with Layer Copy. The trick I'm going to show you next is really amazing. I'm going to show you how to create realistic looking bokeh. The idea is to create a blur layer with specular highlights. So I'm going to do this in these two separate layers. The bottom layer, I'll rename it to specular highlight and the top layer to iris blur. To add specular highlights, I will go to filter gallery, artistic and paint tops. I always set the sharpness to zero and for this image, I'll set the brush size to 40. Now let's go to the blur layer and from the filter, blur gallery, choose iris blur. The way this works is everything inside these four points will be sharp and everything outside will gradually go out of focus. You can increase or decrease the blur intensity from here. So I'm going to click OK and add a mask to this layer. Now I'm going to choose my brush tool and paint black on the mask to reveal the specular highlights. These specular highlights look natural only in the maximum blurred areas and hence around the corners. Just dab your brush on bright spots and if you overdo it, you can always unmask it. Next, I'm going to use a color toning action which by the way you can download for free from the link below. This action is called reverse color and I've set it up as custom 3 on my panel. You can play around with the intensities of the individual layers depending on your image. Alright, time for some edge texture. I'm going to click on texture overlay and choose a texture called film 2 from the style my pick edges and texture pack. You don't have to have this particular texture, you can use any of your own edge textures. I'll resize and adjust it and I'm also going to invert the color by hitting Ctrl or command I. Next, I'm going to change the blend mode to exclusion. And here is the before and the final Polaroid effect. If you have any questions regarding the shoot, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.